Thomas and friends making tracks to great destinations. Dear Christopher, here is your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them because you helped me to make them. Your loving daddy. Today on the island of Sodor, we see what happens when Percy misunderstood a signal. And the three big engines ordered him and duck about. But first, Thomas and Percy were having trouble with coal. It was a beautiful morning on the island of Sodor. Thomas the tank engine's blue paint sparkled in the sunshine as he puffed happily along his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. Was feeling very pleased with himself. Hello, Thomas, whistled Percy. You look splendid. Yes, indeed, boasted Thomas. Blue is the only proper color for an engine. Oh, I don't know. I like my brown paint, said Toby. I've always been green. I wouldn't want to be any other color either, added Percy. Well, well, anyway, huffed Thomas, blue is the only color for a really useful engine. Everyone knows that. Percy said no more. He just grinned at Toby. Later, Thomas was resting when Percy arrived. A large hopper was loading his freight cars full of coal. Thomas was still being cheeky. Careful, he warned. Watch out with those silly cars. Go on, go on, muttered the cars. By the way, went on Thomas, those buffers don't look very safe to me. The last load poured down. Help, help, cried Thomas. Get me out. Percy was worried. But he couldn't help laughing. Thomas's smart blue paint was covered in coal dust from smoke box to bunker. Ha ha! chuckled Percy. You don't look really useful now, Thomas. You look really disgraceful. I'm not disgraceful, choked Thomas. You did that on purpose. Get me out. It took so long to clean Thomas that he wasn't in time for his next train. Toby had to take Annie and Clarabelle. Poor Thomas, whispered Annie to Clarabelle. They were most upset. Thomas was grumpy in the shed that night. Toby thought it a great joke, but Percy was cross with Thomas for thinking he had made his paint dirty on purpose. Fancy a really useful blue engine like Thomas becoming a disgrace to Sir Topham Hatt's railway. 
Next day, Thomas was feeling more cheerful as he watched Percy bring his cars from the junction. The cars were heavy and Percy was tired. Have a drink, said his driver. Then you'll feel better. The water column stood at the end of the siding with the unsafe buffers. Suddenly, Percy found that he couldn't stop. The buffers didn't stop him either. Oh, wailed Percy. Help! The buffers were broken, and Percy was wheel deep in coal. It was time for Thomas to leave. He had seen everything. Now Percy has learned his lesson, too, he chuckled to himself. That night, the two engines made up their quarrel. I didn't cause your accident on purpose, Thomas, whispered Percy. You do know that, don't you? Of course, replied Thomas, and I'm sorry I teased you. Your green paint looks splendid again, too. In future, we'll both be more careful of cold. Here are some dots. If we join the dots, we will see one of the engines on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. But I wonder which engine it is. Let's join the dots and find out. Here we go. There is a tender at the back. There's the cap and the dome. The funnel. Can you tell who it is yet? This engine has got one, two, three, four wheels. And one wheel arch just in front of the cap. Do you know who it is? It's Edward. Hello, Edward. Thomas loves feeling like a really useful engine. But sometimes, being really useful is hard work. In winter time, snow can fall onto the railway line. Sometimes, snow can stop Thomas on his tracks. Then Thomas has to wear his snowplow so he can finish his jobs on time. In nighttime, it is hard for Thomas to see. So Thomas's driver lights his lamp. And Thomas puffs slowly and carefully. He blows his whistle to warn everyone that he's coming. It's hard work, but Thomas always does his best. Thomas has other hard jobs to do. Often he has to pull freight cars full of slate and coal. It is very tiring pulling them uphill. And when Thomas goes down the other side, the heavy freight cars make it hard to slow down. So Thomas has to put on his brakes all the way down. But even though the work is hard, Thomas always tries his best to get the job done. Thomas is a really useful engine. Percy works in the yard at the big station. playing jokes, but they can get him into trouble. One morning, he was very cheeky indeed. Beep, beep! Hurry up, Gordon. The train's ready. Gordon thought he was late. 
laughed Percy and showed him a train of dirty coal cars. Gordon thought how to get back at Percy for teasing him. Next, it was James's turn. Stay in the shed today, James. Sir Topham Hatt will come and see you. Ah, thought James. Sir Topham Hatt knows I'm a fine engine. He wants me to pull a special train. James's driver and fireman could not make him move. The other engines grumbled dreadfully. They had to do James's work as well as their own. At last, the inspector arrived. Show a wheel, James. You can't stay here all day. Sir Topham Hatt told me to stay here. He sent a message this morning. He did not. How could he? He's away for a week. Oh, said James. Oh, where's Percy? Percy had wisely disappeared. When Sir Topham Hatt came back, he was cross with James and Percy for causing so much trouble. But the very next day, Percy was still being cheeky. I say, you engines, I'm to take some freight cars to Thomas's junction. Sir Topham Hatt chose me especially. He must know I'm a really useful engine. More likely he wants you out of the way, grunted James. Gordon looked across to James. They were going to play a trick on Percy. James and I were just speaking about signals at the junction. We can't be too careful about signals, but then I needn't say that to a really useful engine like you, Percy. Percy felt flattered. We had spoken of backing signals, put in James. They need extra special care, you know. Would you like me to explain? No, thank you, James, said Percy. I know all about signals. Percy was a little worried. I wonder what backing signals are, he thought. Never mind, I'll manage. He puffed crossly to his freight cars and felt better. came to a signal. Bother! It's a danger. The signal moved to show line clear. Its arm moved up instead of down. Percy had never seen that sort of signal before. Down means go, and up means stop. So upper still must mean go back. I know. It's one of those backing signals. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Off we go. Stop! You're going the wrong way. But it's a backing signal, Percy protested and told him about Gordon and James. The driver laughed and explained. Oh dear, said Percy. Let's start quickly before they see us. He was too late. Gordon saw everything. engines talked about signals. They thought the subject was funny. Percy thought they were being very silly. On the island of Sodor, everybody enjoys helping each other. If a signal had fallen onto the track, who do you think can help? Harvey! Harvey loves helping his friends. He carefully lifted the fallen signal off the line so that engines can pass through. Gordon pulls the express up the hill, but when he has a full train of passengers, he has to go very slowly. Who do you think can help Gordon and the Express get up the hill safely? Edward. Edward is always happy to help any engine who needs a push. 
And what if Henry suddenly broke down? Oh dear, now Henry can't go anywhere. But Henry isn't worried. He knew he had lots of friends to help him. Boko can take his heavy goods train. And Emily is happy to tow Henry to the steamworks. And everyone will do Henry's jobs while he is away. And everyone will welcome Henry back when he is ready to be really useful again. There are always lots of work to do. Helping one another makes Sir Topham Hatt's railway run smoothly. Do you know what? asked Percy. What? grunted Gordon. Do you know what? Silly, said Gordon. Of course I don't know what. If you don't tell me what what is. Sir Topham Hatt says that the work in the yard is too heavy for me. He's getting a bigger engine to help me. Rubbish, said James. Any engine could do it. If you worked more and chattered less, this yard would be a sweeter, a better, and a happier place. Percy went off to fetch some coaches. That stupid old signal, he thought. He was remembering the time he'd misunderstood a signal and gone backwards instead of forwards. No one listens to me now. They think I'm a silly little engine and order me about. I'll show them. I'll show them. But he didn't know how. By the end of the afternoon, he felt tired and unhappy. He brought some coaches to the station. Hello, Percy, said Sir Topham Hatt. You look tired. Yes, sir. I am, sir. I don't know if I'm standing on my dome or on my wheels. You look the right way up to me, laughed Sir Topham Hatt. Cheer up. The new engine is bigger than you and can probably do the work alone. Would you like to help build my new harbor? Thomas and Toby will help, too. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The new engine arrived. What's your name? asked Sir Topham Hatt. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like Duck better than Montague. Good. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show Duck around. The two engines went off together. Soon they were very busy. James, Gordon, and Henry watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine. We'll have some fun and order him about. Quack, 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 quack. Smoke billowed everywhere. Percy was cross, but Duck took no notice. They'll get tired of it soon. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? Yes, they do, answered Percy. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it later. <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. Suddenly he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! <laughs> Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Duck and Percy calmly sat on the switches outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Gordon, James, and Henry were furious. Stop that noise, bellowed Sir Topham Hatt. They won't let us in, hissed Gordon. Duck, explain this behavior. Beg pardon, sir, but I'm a great western engine. We do our work without fuss. But begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I would be glad if you would inform these uh, engines that we only take orders from you. Quiet, 
said Sir Topham Hatt. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry, and James sniggered. As for you, thundered Sir Topham Hatt, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This is my railway, and I give the orders. After Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. He did so easily. Wants to help and share. Toby wants.